Now, for more analysis on this, I am now joined by international law professor uh, Dire Tladi. Thank you so much for your time, Prof. We do appreciate it. I'm sure that you were listening to the briefing by the Justice Department and the National Prosecuting Authority. Uh, it seems as though the favorite word by government officials is, I am shocked and dismayed by this decision. But why would the UAE reject our request to extradite the Guptas, given the serious uh, allegations and how the Gupta brothers have been implicated here in South Africa? Um, first of all, thank you very much for having me. Uh, and unfortunately, I wasn't able to hear um, the interview. I, I could see the, the images, but I couldn't hear what they were saying. Um, well, basically, I mean, a number of reasons. So um, the extradition agreement that we have with the UAE, first of all, identifies um, the, what's referred to as extraditable offenses. And the extraditable offense in this instance is an offense which is a crime in both countries, number one. And secondly, it must be punishable in both countries by a punishment that's more than one year. And so that might be one reason, for example, that, that um, you, you know, in the UAE, the particular offenses for which the group does are wanted might be punishable by less. I don't know. Um, the, the extradition agreement also provides um, a number of bases on which um, persons may not be extradited. And so one explicit one is a person may not be ex extradited if they are a national of the requested state, so if they are national of uh, the UAE. Um, so that's one reason. Um, another reason um, um, on the basis of which um, an individual may not be extradited um, is if um, there is a, a law in the requested state barring the extradition or the prosecution of the in, uh, of the individual. Um, the, the point I'm making is that there's a myriad of reasons um, 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 on which an extradition um, may be denied. And I'm not exactly sure what the reasons are in this instance. Uh, I'm not sure what answers the, um, the Justice Minister or Shamila gave in uh, the particular interviews that you've had. Yes, so basically they indicated it's on a technicality basis. We're not entirely sure what that means mm. and uh, yeah. you know, what technically did not go according to plan because the minister yeah. also indicated that he had traveled to the UAE to further engage with uh, the UAE authorities about how important it is to extradite the Gupta brothers given what's happened in South yeah. Africa related to state capture. I'm curious to know, yeah. Prof, uh, what happens now because we do know that, for example, the National Prosecuting Authority indicating that we are at the mercy of the UAE authorities, but surely we should have yeah. some kind of ground to stand on to uh, further engage with the UAE authorities and to yeah. explain to them the severity of this matter. Yeah. yeah. So at the beginning, I, I, um, I mean, so one of the things that I heard you say in the insert was um, that we plan to appeal the decision. And one thing that I just want to make clear is, is that I don't think it's it's possible for us to appeal um, um, the decision because we ourselves went party to the extradition proceedings. Um, so extradition takes place really at, at two levels. So one level is um, the executive of the requesting state, that will be us, um, engaging with the executive of the requested state and saying we would like this person to be extradited. And then a decision is taken by the the, uh, the executive of, of that state. And that decision was already taken that, yes, we will extradite. Once that level has occurred, in other words, the executive of the UAE has said, we will extradite. The next thing that happens is then the extra, the, the, the people that are sought, in this instance, the group does, can then challenge the decision. But it's not South Africa's decision that they're challenging, it's the UAE's decision. And they're challenging that decision on the basis of UAE law in UAE courts. And so the parties to that challenge would be the Guptas and the executive of the UAE, um, which means that we don't really have a role. Um, so the, the kind of role that we might play, the, the, um, <clears throat> the only real possibilities that are open for us would be to engage with the executive of the UAE with a view for them um, appealing that decision.
but we certainly can't appeal the decision. Mm. It's interesting, though, that the, the Justice Department and the head of the <coughs> National Prosecuting Authority indicating that we will be appealing, uh, and you know, it's just interesting to see those developments. Uh, I'm also just curious yeah. to know, um, Prof, there are reports, Bloomberg specifically coming out reporting that uh, the Gupta brothers have been spotted in Switzerland, for example, and uh, South Africa was under the impression that uh, the Gupta brothers brothers had been arrested and remained in custody in the UAE. So uh, I think there's a lot of confusion and great concern that there is a whole Interpol notice out about the Gupta brothers, not just linked to possible corruption here in South Africa, but a number of other countries as well. But they've now since been spotted in Switzerland. Yeah. I mean, that would be very strange. So under um, the extradition agreement, and in fact, under just about any extradition agreement, um, when a request is made, um, it's, there's a duty on, on, on the requested state um, to place in custody the persons that are sought until the proceedings are complete. So, um, because they always have to be in a position to carry out the extradition. So, in fact, if they are not in custody and they're able to freely travel, uh, one, it suggests that there has been non-compliance with the extradition agreement, and so that already is a breach of an international obligation. Um, but secondly, and this is not a legal point, it's more of a political point, um, it might suggest that there is, in fact, um, um, an element of bad faith on the part of um, the UAE, that um, the initial decision by the executive to to extradite, because remember, they have taken the decision that they're going to extradite. That decision was then challenged in court. It might suggest that that initial decision was, in fact, not taken in good faith and that South Africa was being um, taken for a ride. Mm, certainly. Just lastly, Prof, I'm curious to know about the UAE um, taking that Interpol notice seriously because it's not just some random government. I don't want to call the South African government random, but it's not just a random yeah. request from our government. There is clearly an Interpol yeah. notice also that's been sent out. And, I, you know, as a South African watching this and seeing all the allegations and everything that emerged out yeah. of the State Capture Commission uh, about yeah. what the Gupta brothers were involved in. One wonders, you know, do people understand the severity of what's really going on here and what really happened? Yeah, I mean, interestingly, I think from a from a legal perspective, in fact, the instrument that is uh, most authoritative in this instance is not really the Interpol notice. The instrument that's most authoritative is um, the agreement that we have with uh, UAE, uh, the extradition agreement, um, first point. Um, and secondly, I understand that UAE is a party to the UN Convention to Combat um, Corruption, which also lays out specific obligations. Uh, and, then sec and then thirdly, the request that we made and the decision by the UAE to accede to that request. These three instruments are um, uh, the instruments that most compel that should most compel the UAE to act in a manner consistent with international law by rendering or at least doing everything possible to render. Understanding, of course, that it may well be possible that it's that it's not possible to render because of the technicalities that are um, referred to in um, um, the extradition agreement. But, but they have to do everything within their power, acting in good faith to try to render um, the Guptas. Just lastly, Prof, um, I just want to ask if you think South Africa will win when it comes to extraditing <clears throat> the Gupta brothers. Will we ever see them in a South African court? Can I just say, um, <laughs> on extradition matters, this one and the Bushiri one, I've appeared, uh, this is my fifth interview, uh, and three of them were with the NCA. Um, and at every interview, I've always said that the mere fact that you have an agreement the mere fact that you have an undertaking from the other state that they will extradite um, does not mean that extradition will take place. It's a, it's a very difficult process under the best of circumstances. Um, in other words, even if the other state is acting in good faith, there's never um, any guarantee that the person will be extradited because of the way that extradition agreements are granted and because of the fact that ultimately whether or not extradition takes place is actually dependent on domestic law, as is clearly stated in the extradition agreement. So, so it's it's hard to say, but once there's been a decision like this one, it seems the chances become very, very likely that it will not happen. But it's still possible.
Mm, it's very interesting. Let's see how all of this um, develops. Thank you so much for your insights. We do appreciate it. That was international law professor Dire Tladi.